So this time I'm going to talk, as I have often talked about, different Reaper actions that you might find interesting. I saw that Kenny is also uploading a couple of Reaper actions that you should know of. So be sure to check his video out. He's obviously someone to look into every single time he uploads a video. This time I'm going to show you, because someone requested in the comments, First, let's go with Global Sampler. When you're trying to install Global Sampler, what you will find is, as most things, you can find them on the forum itself. Uh, I will link this video in the description, but you can also just use the QR as we, as we see the video. So this thing is actually recording or buffering the audio that's coming out of whatever you place the plugin. And then you can just select it and drag it into the arrangement. That's incredibly useful because you can sample yourself real time. And that's really, really useful. I will give you three very precise examples of this. So you will go into this website and you will look for this installation part and you will copy this code, go into Reaper, go into extensions, reapack, import repositories. Here you will paste the repository. You will hit OK. And yes, I have already loaded it, so it won't show up. And you will go again into the browse packages. And now when you look for global sampler, it's going to show up. You right click, you install it, you apply it. And now under the, under the actions menu, you will find global sampler. You can use this first one to enable it and this second one to tweak the coloring if you don't like it so much as it is. It will open up this menu. You can have fun with it. That's not the point of the video. So I set up this one in my main floating toolbar. I have a whole video on it and I will link it in the description so you can start building your main toolbar. That's the actions that you use the most every single time. For that, you just go into the media editor, set up the main floating toolbar and go watch that video. So whenever I hit here, I open this global sampler. So whenever I start playing my audio, and I can just grab one hit, I can drag it into the arrangement and it's there. And as you can see, it's always buffering. If you right click it, you can change the coloring system to whatever you might want to use or is better on your eyes. And I just click right here again and it's off. Usually it will drop an alert and it will tell you that it's going to terminate it. It's fine. I shut off the notification so I can just open it and close it. And it's at the top of my screen and it doesn't mess up with my screen space because I'm really worried about workflow most of the time. When can you take advantage of this? Maybe you have one track that's monitoring your instrument that you have plugged into Reaper, but you're not recording as you play the session. You're only playing back, right? You can look into everything of the recording modes on the video that I also made that I will also link in the description. But with this up here, you can be playing along and whenever you hit with a nice idea, you have this whole time to just go into it, select it, drag it and save it back into place because we all hate that someone wasn't recording and something beautiful just came up, right? Another situation would be when you're doing some sound design. So for example, if I'm working with this media item right here and I'm introducing and trying to find a sound that I like and I'm using, for example, here the Lifeline series by Plugin Boutique that I highly recommend. They really sound great. If you want to use an affiliate link to buy them or check them out, it, it, it's linked in the description. Especially the Expanse is the one that I've been using the most a lot, but as a combo, they work great as well. This is mainly like a channel strip kind of thing and this is more a creative kind of plugin. So maybe you're playing around and and looking for a sound. And you eventually get into something that you really like. You close your plugins. You just select this right here. I will zoom out. I will drag it into the arrangement. And now I have that playing. It's as easy as that. Global Sampler is such a fantastic tool that I could actually leave it open every single time, just up here, really, really small. And I would also add it to my screen sets layouts under the view menu and just leave it in my windows. For example, this one is my video editing. So I'll save it like that and I'll just reload it like this. So whenever I 
open my global sampler, it's always that same size. And I'm not trying to figure out how to do it every single time. And the third action that could, and, and, and just an action that could be really helpful for this is that maybe you recorded something from the global sampler and it will usually name the file something like JSFX because it's going to be processed. But remember that you can just right click and rename the file individually, or you can use an action called rename items to track name and you can have this called uh, drums processing right so whenever i run this action this item up here is going to change the reference and the file itself in my computer without changing the name in the computer and if you have many many samples like such uh, what you can do also is to instead of having drum processing just like that you can use the action rename items on selected tracks incrementally so that way you will have processing one processing three right this is only changing the name of the media item because if i go into the file and i look for the file of the name it's still some amount of numbers jsfx or you can change it straight here it will change in the computer and it will change on the media item inside of reaper whatever suits you best a couple of other Reaper extensions that you might enjoy. So maybe you have some backing vocals. This is from a track that I recently produced that hasn't been re that hasn't been released, but I have the authorization, so it's fine. Dice que te gustan todas. And maybe you want to pan all of them by using the action pan selected track symmetric symmetrically from left to right. If you don't want to get into some really precise kind of thing and Dice que te gustan todas. And you can listen that the timing is just a little bit off. Dice que te gustan todas. I eventually recorded more vocals into this, but this should do the, the trick. I'm going to use another Reaper extension that you can look as a line takes made by the almighty MPL. So just right click, install it, apply it. And whenever you run this action, a line takes, it's going to open up this window. You can make up your own preset or you can use the closest one that you really like, for example, this one for vocals, and it's going to change a couple of things. But you re have to remember that the best timing has to be on top, right? And the next tracks that are going to be aligned have to be next to each other all the way down. Okay, so for this to really, really work, because I have gotten some glitches before, uh, I'm not, I don't remember, sorry if I don't remember if this has been reported on the forum. I will check it and if it hasn't, I will write it myself. So I moved a little bit the phrases so they are a little bit further from each other. Probably no singer will be so off timing, but what you will do is select first all of the media items, then go into the actions menu and select the align takes Lua, I'll run and close, and it's going to open this menu, right? I'm going to use the preset factory vocals. This works great. And I'm going to get the reference. The reference is always the track that's on the top and the dots are all of the versions that are under it, right? So at first I'm getting the reference and it's going to get this scan and the dub is going to be all of these versions because those are the rest of the tracks. And whenever I start handling this small knob right here, you can see how everything is getting closer in time, right? So maybe you want to try this one track at a time and try and try to really get them together. Remember that more or less these timings of how much is it pushing and pulling, you can usually get away with it around 0.15, maybe sometimes depending on the content, times 20. And you might want to do it maybe by blocks of four. So you can do something like this get them closer and since i have available this manual editing also i can just make this a little bit here and i can get this thing a little bit closer and you can adjust it by hand if it's not working in the end you can do it again get reference get dub and keep on doing that repeatedly until you get something closer to what you really really wanted and this is really fast i have other videos just on editing so be sure to check my videos there's another action that you might be interested. So let's suppose for a moment that you have some drum hits. Like such, right? And you are, you're not feeling it, like the samples are not working for you. And you might want to try and switch them up. You could try and go with double clicking the track, 
double clicking here, choose new file and try to replace it or using the media explorer, the media explorer, explorer. How is that R so hard for me right now? Uh, and you can go into your sample library and go into something like this, go into kicks and insert as new takes or replace media source. And that's really fast because you can just replace all of the samples in one single track by just hitting insert media item in, and re by replacing the media source, especially if you're dragging down the samples. Another way, if you want to layer your actual existing sounds to it or use them as some sort of trigger, you can just use an available action that I really liked that's called MIDI drums to MIDI. And it's also a script. Remember, go into the React pack. We have done it twice this video. Run it and close it. And now I have these other actions that are these other tracks that have these MIDI events down here. And I can use this, for example, in my Ria Samplomatic, it's loaded empty, but you can load like a clavy sound and use that as a really clean trigger for a dynamics processor on another track or for a gate or for a dynamics processor on another track or for some audio handling uh, using this uh, envelope followers parameters available in every single plugin in Reaper, and that's crazy. Text events for me doesn't make a lot of sense. It's also right there, but the contrast isn't high enough for me. But if you turn it into a chord track, I wouldn't waste extra screen space for this. It could be useful, maybe it isn't. Like, that's useful. I didn't want to stop mentioning that one. So, <clears throat> Those are some Reaper actions that I think are really useful and maybe you want to try them out. If you like this kind of videos, be sure to comment, like, subscribe and hit the notification bell and let me know in the comments what else would you like me to show you in this channel. There are some other videos already in line, but I will get to those that you write in the comment section. Straight from Mexico City, my name is Juanchis and thanks for listening.